The heart of every man craves a great adventure, but life doesn't usually feel that way. Jesus speaks of narrow gates and wide roads, but the masculine journey is filled with many twists and turns. So how do we keep from losing heart while trying to find the good way when life feels more like a losing battle than something worth dying for? Grab your gear and come on a quest with your band of brothers who will serve as the guides in what we call the masculine journey. The masculine journey starts here now. Wow, it's hard to believe we're almost halfway through April, or we're past halfway through April. Yes, Tim. yes we are. And Sam is down at the beach. It's a dirty job, but somebody has to do it, Sam. Yeah, it, you know, there's worse places to be in the uh, spring and summer than at the beach in North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> but we are excited about this topic. Coming off boot camp, uh, one of the things that we get a chance to experience is... Uh, Asking God, what are the labels that we've been attached to us our whole lives? And these labels have a significant impact on us, don't they, Sam? Well, absolutely. It, you know, it, it, it is the filter in which you look through life. All the things that happen to you, you know, good, bad, and different, you know, you have to run it through that filter of that label if you don't let God step in and, and break that for you and with you. And so one of the questions that we ask guys almost early on especially in the poser talk is you know what are some of the labels that you remember as a kid that different people were putting them on but often they had the same thing to say because they all had one mouthpiece and it was essentially satan trying to get you to buy into something that was a lie about your personality or whatever it was well we're going to go to a clip pretty quick here and and it's from cloudy with a chance of meatballs and you can imagine this guy. <laughs> he might have struggled with a label, too, especially as a kid, which is where we first get introduced to these labels. And this may sound a bit familiar for you. Have you ever felt like you were a little bit different? Like you had something unique to offer the world if you could just get people to see it? Then you know exactly how it felt to be me. Go ahead, Flint. <coughs> what is the number one problem facing our community today? Untied shoelaces. Which is why I've invented a laceless alternative foot covering. Spray on shoes! Wow! How are you gonna get him off, nerd? <laughs> What a freak! He wants to be smart, but that's lame! I wanted to run away that day. But you can't run away from your own feet. <laughs> There's several large truths in that clip, Jim. Yes, 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 yes wanna, there are. In that particular community... There are a lot of untied shoes. In, yes, in, back yes, in the day. and I want spray shoes. <laughs> of course, it's not so much nowadays. But Harold, when you were a kid, did they what were that? What, what what did you guys wear? Was it like Flintstones or what? <laughs> Most, mostly, us little kids in Sullivan, Alabama, back then didn't wear shoes. Oh. <laughs> and you walked uphill both ways, right? <laughs> Uh, you, needed, you needed sprays on shoes, and it's hard to run away from your feet. Well, interestingly, yes. I can relate to that clip. Um, and when I think back to the label, because I, I guess you guys would agree I'm a bit different, and I, I and I kind of <laughs> took pride like that young man did in being different. And you know what they called me a retard. That was that was mm. the word back, or you know, yeah, he's a retard. And it, ca it caught on so well that my fourth grade teacher called my mother and said, we really need to talk about putting Robbie in a special class. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> and my mother, uh, my mother will relate this issue to you, that that teacher told him, I don't think Robbie will ever graduate from high school. <laughs> Do you believe that, Sam? Well, I'm not going to answer that, Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid that'll be a label for you. Well, it was. 
It, it definitely was, and it, it was a bit of a struggle. It made me feel like, wow, I, I, there's no sense in me trying to do anything because I'm a retard. And I actually, at, at one point in time, adopted it, and, and you were shaking your head, Jim. Like, yeah, you, uh, I, you know, it was funny because I was on the upset in that scale. You know, I was the nerd, the geek, and literally I would try to, you know, screw up tests just so I'd get worse grades, you know. So I want to be, I want to stick out like a sore thumb. But Jim, Jim Tube, Jim G, <laughs> Jim Graham, what's Satan trying to get us to do with these labels? Accept them. He wants us to buy into the lie so that we don't recognize our true labels from God. Yeah, and this, we, we call it an agreement. Is, is the, we the, do call it that. And share with our listeners a little bit about what we, how you can handle agreements. <laughs> How you can handle agreements? Yeah. Break them. Yeah, how do you break them? <laughs> well, first of all, recognize where they're coming from. Uh, one of the labels I had was kind of a dummy thing because, in fact, I was that special kid like you and was put <laughs> into, sent to a psychologist in the fourth grade, fifth grade, because... I was considered to be have a problem. I never paid attention. I had mediocre grades except for science, which I always seemed to have an A in. But but that was because I was interested. But most of the kids thought of me as a dummy. And being big adds to that. And I probably had a higher IQ than most of the kids in the class, and that's what they found out when they tested me and found out that my problem wasn't that I was slow. It was I was bored. And but I bought into it to a large extent, and then I was really excited. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So how when and 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 a lot of these labels, Sam, Satan actually overplays his hand to an extent, right? Yeah, he does. And before before we go to that, I think it, it's important to also recognize he usually uses that element of truth. I mean, there's some part of that that feels true is why we buy into it. It's just not completely absurd to us. You know, maybe in a certain situation, you know, for me it was, you know, I, that you're never enough. You, you're never going to be enough. And maybe in certain situations that was true, but it wasn't going to be true in every situation. And when I started to buy into that label of not being enough, it applied to every situation as I looked at it versus to say, no, I'm going to break the agreement with the part that's not true. It was true that day in this particular situation. It's not true all this other time. Because that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants you to get in and just buy the whole thing hook, line, and sinker. But it, it's stepping in and saying, no, I'll acknowledge that this piece is true, but the rest of it, no, that, that's not true about me. And breaking the agreement, just like Jim said, and yeah. you said of, of stepping in and saying, no, this isn't always the case this isn't what's going on and maybe one of the biggest right. ones we all buy into is i'm a sinner so god really can't use me i'm mm -hmm. not i'm not worth being his beloved child which is the real label we have right well before we go to the satan over playing his hand we'll play <laughs> another clip we have about a young man he was a baseball player and when I when I when I mentioned to Jim the name of the clip was Babe, he was thinking about a pig, and so <laughs> I was thinking about a big blue ox. I, <laughs> <laughs> you know, for those who are uh, just think about it as you think about Babe. Strike three, batsman. Back of the line. Next. Your turn, Fat Chop. Yeah, come on, Fat Chop. Let's see if you can even hit the ball. I said next. <laughs> Hurry up, Lord. Hey, son, pick up the stick. He hasn't held a bat in his life. He doesn't need a bat. He can use his stomach. Nice <laughs> miss, <laughs> Try it again. He can't even foul the ball. Are you trying to kill it? You're trying to hit the long ball off the great Matthias, aren't you? Strike one. Hey, see if you can even hit the ball. He probably can't even make it go one inch.
brother? I'm not. I've been waiting 30 years for St. Francis of Xavier to show me a miracle. I think it's just arrived. So Sam, <laughs> that's a great clip to, to set up that concept of clearly um, Satan has overplayed his hand with this particular babe. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of times, Robbie, you know, the terms for me that are always the ones and is the uh, always and never. You always do this. You never do this. I don't know of anything that I never do. I don't know of anything that I always do. And so when I hear those things and I hear that condemnation, it's the enemy for me overplaying his hand. And I can say, wait a minute. No, that's not true. I don't always do whatever this is, or I don't never do what this other thing is. And so those are the key indicators for me, just watching when he overplays his hand. And so one of the neat things, I think, when you go back and, and start to process with Jesus, I mean, spend time with him. If, if This is really an interesting thing, that often his attacks are very calculated and they are aimed at your particular glory, like in the case of Babe Ruth, who obviously could hit a baseball like nobody you ever, and, and I, but I would imagine we have one person here actually saw Babe Ruth. <laughs> Oh, funny, funny. How did you pitch to him? Didn't you pitch in that way? Oh, I deserve, I deserve whatever I get. <laughs> but, uh, you know, those that were aimed directly at, at how he could play. So when we come back, we have some really cool clips from Hacksaw Ridge, and we're going to talk about more about the strategy Satan is using with those labels on you that maybe – by spending some time thinking about it, you might under uncover a little bit of how God made you special. And that's what we got coming up. Stay tuned. We got a lot more Masculine Journey Radio coming up. Going, of course, you can always go to MasculineJourneyRadio.org to register for the boot camp. Hi, this is Sam with Masculine Journey. I'm here with my son, Eli. We're going to talk about ways that you can help support the ministry. One way you can go to smile.amazon.com. There's information on our website there on how to do that. Then you can go to Facebook.com where you can click the donate button or you can go to MasculineJourneyRadio.org. Once again, look for the donate button. Or if you want to mail something in, mail it to P.O. Box 550, Kernersville, North Carolina, 27285. Sam, this November boot camp could literally change a lot of men's life. I talk to a lot of men, they're saying... They say they don't know what their place is in the grand scheme of things. They don't know how to behave as Christian men. God designed us for freedom, and it's coming up at this boot camp. It is. Go to MasculineJourneyRadio.org to register now. Just $169 early bird pricing for four amazing days. Go to MasculineJourneyRadio.org. Register now. Welcome back to Masculine Journey Radio. Today we are talking about labels. What labels have you received from the enemy maybe <clears throat> there's interestingly a backside to that where maybe you know some of the things of what god calls you that's a neat thing labels are important as we tend to look at our life through a lot of different labels and uh right at the end of the last segment there we were talking about how sometimes satan overplays his hand and uh when you look into some of those labels you you actually can find something that God's gifted you with that Satan's really trying to keep you to trying to get you to hide, right, Sam? Absolutely. You know, um, for me, a lot of what my career has been secularly is, you know, doing training, uh, teaching, doing things along those lines, doing presentations with clients, a lot of opportunity to be in front of people speaking, let alone the ministry stuff with the boot camps and the radio station, and, and a big part of the thing that he used to tell me as a kid through the mouth of my sister primarily was, you know, you have nothing important to say, why don't you just shut up? And, and I lived that way for a long time until God kind of broke in and said, no, that's not true, and came after my heart in a big way, which really was very freeing for me to step more into the role that I really believe he wanted me to play and designed me to play. And it's it's been just an amazing journey with him to step into that and break free from that lie. 
Yeah, we have, as I promised, some amazing <laughs> clips. And if you've seen the movie Hacksaw Ridge, you can't help but see how Satan, by way of a certain sergeant and some men yes. that were with him, <laughs> went after Desmond Doss's glory, which the last thing in the world you would think he was was a coward. But as we set up this first clip, he gets introduced to the sergeant and the sergeant's all about labels, isn't he, Jim? Oh, yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wonder where he gets some of this stuff from. This is good. <laughs> what turn, shine! Oh, line up! Move it! Let's go! Move it! Move it! You are a very strange-looking individual, if you don't mind me saying so, Private. Name? Andy Walker. How long have you been dead, son? Uh, sir? I am not sir! <laughs> I am Sergeant Howell or Sarge. Sir, you say for useless people. The name is Ghoul, you say? Walker. S Sergeant. Ghoul it is. Yes, Sergeant. There's something off in your presentation, Private. Can't place it. Is it your hair? Is it the wrinkle in your trousers? I have a knife in my foot, Sergeant. <laughs> oh, yes. Of course. That's it. The knife. What is your name, soldier? Spitty Riker. No. Your name is Private idiot. Do you know why? Because I have a knife in my foot. Who placed the knife there, Private? It was an accident, Sergeant. It was playing stretch. I'm heartened by the knowledge you did not place it there with intention. Who <laughs> threw the knife? I did, Sergeant. Private Krasinski. You look part Indian. To what tribe do you belong, son? No, no, I'm, I'm Polish. Wrong. I believe you must have Cherokee or Shawnee blood in you. No, sir. Are you contradicting me? Let me see your Indian war cry, son! I I don't. <laughs> what is your animal spirit? Are you a garter snake? No, Sergeant! Are you a chipmunk? No, Sergeant! <laughs> Are you a dancing reindeer? No, Sergeant! Are you contradicting me, Private? No, Sergeant! Good. Then I shall henceforth call you Chief as a sign of great respect to your people. Thank you, Sergeant! <laughs> Are you grinning at me, boy, or is that your natural state? No, Sergeant. Name Private? Desmond Dawes. I have seen stocks of corn with better physiques. Makes me want to pull an ear off, Private. Can you carry your weight? Yes, Sergeant. Should be easy for you then. Corporal. <laughs> Sergeant. Make sure you keep this man away from strong winds. Yes, Sergeant. Private idiot. Yes, Sergeant. Raise your foot. <laughs> Higher. <laughs> Everyone outside, now. Move it. I said move it. All right, just get in my uniform, sorry. Should I ask him too, Corporal? No memory of it, Sarge. I believe any man who takes such pride in his natural naked state will surely enjoy the brisk of the outdoors. Now move your privates, private parts. <laughs> move it, <laughs> you son of an exhibitionist. <laughs> That's some labeling right there, Jim. Did you uh, experience any of that in the military? <laughs> uh, well, my experience in the military was going to the Citadel for my first year. And yes, they called us pretty much everything but our names. And uh, as a plebe, the first year person in any of the academies, uh, we were called maggot, screw, zero, a dozen things I can't say on the air. And every one of them was targeting us to make us feel like we were nothing because they wanted to tear us down to build us up. And it occurred to me while I was wandering around a short while ago that one of the benefits of being torn down by the labels is we can recognize, you know, these aren't true. They're lies. And what we called it was it was all Mickey Mouse stuff. It wasn't important. And you could let the labels roll off and go for the, the real label that matters, which you get from God. I keep wanting to talk about the name. and Yeah, well, <laughs> for and I just want to hear your Indian war cry from Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's Polish. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I do have a little Indian, but anyway, <laughs> getting back to Desmond Doss and what we were talking about, that clearly there was one label that they really tried their best to pin on him. Besides the, you know, corn stalk, but the ear joke was funny. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, they were they did their best 
and obviously Satan was trying to get his best because he there there are some courageous men in this world that I've come across that I've heard about, but there's hardly anybody like Desmond Doss if you've seen the movie. But listen to their attempts here to put another label on him. So how come you don't fight? Or you think you're better than us? No. But what if he was attacked? Huh. Whoa! Oh, oh, oh. Say like that. The Bible says to turn the other cheek, don't it? Yeah, see, I don't think this is a question of religion, fellas. I think this is cowardice. Plain and simple. That right, Doss? Well, go on. Take a poke! Tell you what, I'm gonna give you a free shot. Huh? Right there. Hit me, Doss. Go on. Let him have it. Go ahead. No? And Harold is here in the studio, one of my really best friends, and he he was actually the first person to tell me to go see Hacksaw Ridge because you you had seen it the night before, and you were like, "Robbie, you got to go see this movie. It's unbelievable." But I'm I'm curious what that brings out in you, Harold, as you as you hear that scene. <clears throat> well, the courage that the man had to maintain his composure and to do what he knew to be right, irregardless, which is not a word, regardless of what the others <clears throat> were trying to encourage him to do, uh, it takes a whole lot more backbone not to do something wrong when that's the easy thing to do. And for me, being the little guy and one of my labels early oh. on was, was shorty. <laughs> you know, I, I, unlike you big guys, <laughs> I, I had a different stroke in life. Uh, always one of the smaller people. So I became pretty combative in nature. Uh, for a long time, I wanted to be a fighter pilot in the Navy. But uh, God had different plans and brought little Susie into my life. And uh, but I identify a lot with the the character in the movie, in the sense that I've had to not do things I wanted to do because of my combative nature. Mm -hmm. uh, it's I've told people before, you know, it's uh, I either turn around and walk away or I kill you. And Sam, that's a critical issue, and and part of the reason we use these movie clips is to have our hearts come back alive and speak to something that we didn't know was in there. Yeah, or it was long lost. You know, it's one of those two that it just happened so long ago, it just feels like a faded memory, or that we didn't even know was there, and God will use those to bypass that, that label, to bypass that intellectual thing where you're going to try to talk yourself out of it and go right to that passion in your heart that says, no, this is really a fundamental truth that you need to be aware of. And uh, Jim, in your case, out on the uh, PGA, they had a label for you, <laughs> MacGyver. Yes, yes, it, it was funny how that uh, occurred. Uh, uh, one of the uh, 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 PGA tour staff had uh, we had a bunch of new people coming in. He says, "If you need anything, go go to Jim." And um, uh, we'll, uh, when they're getting ready to leave and hop on the airplane. Um, they managed to lock their keys in the car. Well, it was it was uh, an old Cadillac with the uh, trunk release, so I just jumpered the fuse box and got their keys out of the trunk of their car, and one of the guys goes, you really are MacGyver, and, and it <laughs> stuck. It stuck for years. <laughs> well, you know, it's an interesting thing, Sam. Now that we know Jim a little bit better, he is MacGyver, isn't he? <laughs> Yeah, that'll be different than what I normally call him. But yeah, that would be. <laughs> but that's better. That's nicer. Yeah. Well, the interesting thing is that you know we we talk about identity a lot in on this show, and identity is a is a critical issue to the masculine journey. And so we're going to buy some labels. And and it's and it's an interesting thing to determine and actually get with God alone at some point with a piece of paper and begin to write out, God, what do you think of me? What are the you know what is a herald? 
what is a Robbie? What is a Jim? What is a, a Sam? And, and what are some of the things you've learned, Sam, that, that really are near and dear to you through this message? Well, I think a lot of it's just been God speaking some truth into my heart on just the ways that he sees me. You know, that I, I do, I am going to fight for the right causes, that, uh, you know, I can. Those, those attributes that I used to think were negative, used in, in his purpose, in his way, becomes very much a powerful thing. And just being able to walk more in that identity has been more than I could even imagine. Wow, it's a it's an it's an amazing journey. I couldn't suggest highly enough that that you all listening today take a pad of paper somewhere and go get alone with the Lord, and begin to ask Him and 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 flesh out some of this stuff. A great way to do that would be to sign up for our next boot camp. It's coming up May- yeah. November, <laughs> November November ninth <laughs> through the twelfth. Yes, you can go to Masculine Journey Radio. Register early. Yeah, we only have fifty slots, so come get registered. We'd love to see you.